Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're looking at making a hand-painted blunderbuss or thunder gun game object. It will be a low poly model and only one texture so great for games but also really great fun to create. In this session we'll be refining the shape and generally making our shapes more detailed. If you like what I do and want to make a full game ready character then take a look at my character course and take a look in the description for my other courses, other playlists on this channel for lots of educational content. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time. And I want to refine these shapes to make them a bit more curved. And I want to do it in a nice, efficient way. So I'll zoom in on those. And what I'm going to need to do, if I go into edit mode with tab, is cut down the middle and start making these slightly curved. But it's symmetrical, so I only really want to edit one side and have it repeat on the other. So we'll need to mirror this object and these objects at the back here. We don't really need to do it for the cylindrical objects because they don't really need any editing. Now there is a couple of things you need to check. So on the object, just make sure that the center point, that little orange dot, is right in the middle of the object. So go to top view with seven on your numpad, make sure it's in the middle. So it is for this object, for that object as well, but I'm not so sure about these objects. Yep, that's in the middle, and that one's in the middle as well. So we won't have any problems, but make sure that's the case. If it isn't, you can select on an object and move that center point manually by going up to the options and then origins and then I can G, then Y, and move it into the correct position. It doesn't matter if it's out really slightly, it won't make a big difference, but try and make it as close to the center as possible. Then to come out of this, back to options and turn off that origins. But you should generally be okay if you followed along with me and they should all be in the center. So we'll need to create a mirror. We can go down to the object modifiers here and go to add modifier mirror, but it's gone all wrong. It's mirroring in the X axis, so across here rather than the Y axis this way. Well, we can change that by going to the X axis here and turning that off and turning on the Y. That's great, so it's mirrored across the Y axis. We've got one slight problem though. If I go to edit mode and press one on my keyboard to go to vertex mode and then press G to grab and start moving it, it looks like there's two objects, one on top of the other. And that's not actually the case. It's just mirroring the whole thing and overlapping itself. So actually we need to cut down the middle so it just mirrors to the other side, rather than having this side mirror to this side and this side mirror to the other side. So if I press Control R to do a big loop cut down the middle and then double left click, then let's go to side view with three on my numpad, wireframe mode so I can see my faces, cross to face mode and select half the mesh like this. So you can see that half selected there and press delete and faces. Now if I isolate that model with forward slash on my numpad, you can see that half of the faces haven't got those dots in the middle. So actually that's the effect of the modifier. So if I turn that off, there's half my shape and the modifier is doing the other part. Now I can start editing my mesh. So you have to cut your models in half in order to not get any overlap. Now one last thing, if I go to vertex mode with one and select one of these verts and press G to grab, it actually separates my mesh. If I go to solid mode, you'll see it's separate and we don't ever want to be able to see inside our mesh like this. So I'll undo that. If you turn on clipping, it will clip them together. So if I press G to grab, it won't move it side to side, only up and down. So make sure clipping's enabled there. Okay, I'll press forward slash on my numpad to come out of isolation mode, and I want to start editing my shape so it's got some curve to it. So if I select this bottom edge of vertices here with Alt left click on one of the edges going across and press G then Y, I can move that in slightly. It's not really working as a curve, so I'm going to have to press Control R to do a loop cut around there, double left click, and then G then Y to pull that outwards. It's not going to pull this one because that's clipped. At the front here, if I press G then X, that will curve that round to the front, and you can kind of see how we can start making a bit more of a curved object. Also at the front here, if I select this edge down here, I could press G twice and slide it across the edge and then it will sort of curve around a little bit like this. Now it does depend on how high poly you want to go and how low poly you want to go. If you want your game to be super, super efficient, then you don't want to add too many vertices. However, you might want to do a loop cut down here, Control R, double left click, and then you can start making more of a curve with more detail, so G then X, and it's like I say, more curvy. I can then select this edge loop down here, GG to slide it in, GG to slide it in that way, and we've got a sort of curve around the front there. But it is creating a bit more topology. It's not much, it probably won't make much difference to your game, but it's something to think about. 
we might want to select these bits and GG to curve them around and these bits G then Y to just bring them across slightly. Maybe at the back here, perhaps bringing this selection in GG, so it's got a bit more of a curve to it. And this one here, GG. These ones at the bottom here, GG. Let's see what that's looking like. Okay, so that's not too bad. I think we might want the shape to just be a little bit thinner. So I'll select it all, G then Y, and just bring it in a little bit more. Just to make sure these brackets are kind of settling in there okay, and that looks good. I'm not sure that it needs to go up so much at the front there, even though the design was like that, I can bring those down a bit. So I'll GG and bring those down just a touch like that. And there we go. Okay, so what about these other shapes around here? They should be a little bit easier, and I'll show you a quick way of using the mirror. So we go up to Edit, Preferences and Add-ons, just here. And if I type in Auto, you can see there's an auto mirror just there. Make sure that's ticked and then close this down. Now if I go across to my side menu here, N is the keyboard shortcut for that. I can go to my edit menu here and there's my auto mirror. And we want to mirror in the Y axis, remember? So I'll tick Y. And actually I don't want to mirror in the positive because can you see the Y there? That's the positive. I want it to come out this way at the front. So change that to negative and it will come out to the front. Then I press auto mirror and you can see it's created a mirror modifier here. It's already got clipping enabled. And if I go into edit mode, it's cut it in half for me. But you must make sure that center point is in the middle because it will go around that center point. Now I can go in and start editing this shape to create a bit more curve. So I can select that edge loop down there and GG to edge slide and GG to edge slide back the other way. And that creates just a subtle curve, a little bit more. So I'm just pressing GG to do that. Same with the top, select that edge loop, GG to bring it down and GG to bring it across. Let's take a quick look. It's looking all right. I'm not sure the trigger really needs it so much, but what I might do with the trigger, which is slightly away from my reference image, is just grab these faces here and go to a front view and just make the trigger a little bit thinner like this. I'll take these endpoints, make sure you go into wireframe mode to edit those and just push those into the gun like that. And what I might do is select this edge loop here, bring it up slightly, this one here, bring it across slightly, and then this edge loop here, remember, select edge loops, alt left click. I can press control B on this one to bevel it like this, use my wheel and create another loop cut like that. So it kind of curves it round. And I think that's a little bit smoother now. I'll select these ones though, back to front view and just pull them in really slightly. If I hold down shift, you can move in smaller increments. I'll kind of smooth this out a little bit more. Okay, and that's looking all right. I feel like it needs to be a little bit wider now. So S then Y. And you can make these minor adjustments fairly simply. Okay, so the trigger might need to be a little bit thinner. So scale Y and that looks fine. I think our flint at the top here needs a bit more curve. So I'll go into edit mode there. Control R, create a loop cut, and select these edges down here. And I'll just do this manually, bring those in, GG, GG, create a bit more curve. These ones at the top here, GG. Oh, I haven't given it a mirror yet. So let's just sort out the shape first. You can do it in this order if you like. And then I can auto mirror in the Y, and it goes across the Y. I think it's a little bit wide, so I'll just make it a little bit thinner and bring it into my shape a bit more. Now I know the flint hasn't got anything it's hitting. You might want to put that in. I'm kind of using some artistic license here really. But I suppose we could put a shape in here. Shift A to add, mesh cube, scale it right down, and then just edit it slightly so it's something to sort of strike against. And see what that looks like. Just move it out slightly. And it needs some sort of rotation here. So I'll come into here, Shift A to add, mesh cylinder. But I'm going to make it smaller than 12 this time. I'm, going to, I'm only going to make it six because it's a really small shape in here. So I'll rotate around the X 90 degrees and scale that down and just move that into position somewhere around there. Let's just see how that's looking. I'll move my 3D cursor so I can see it. We could possibly join those together, but it doesn't matter too much. Okay, so how are we looking? Let's have a quick look around. I think we're pretty much there. Let's compare it side by side to our reference image. So I'll grab our reference 
Shift D to duplicate on the x-axis and let's look at them together. Check I haven't missed anything and I think we're looking pretty good. Okay, so hopefully you're enjoying the process. Thanks for all the support people are giving me. Thanks to those that watched an advert, donated or signed up to my Patreon. Comment below with any thoughts you have or questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.